Hey everyone, welcome to the Echo Podcast. My name is Ryan Becker. It's my privilege to introduce you to today's guests. The first is John Daniel. John I met back in 2014. He's a really good friend of mine um, and works with me on Engage Ministries at Southern. He is studying his master's in mental health counseling and so really excited for him on his journey. The other is a really good friend of mine and actually a business partner of mine as well, Kevin Christensen. Kevin graduated from Southern around the same time that I did in 2015. Uh, he currently works as a producer, a scriptwriter, and an actor. And he also co-founded the Scratch News with me, which is an Adventist news source for um, all Seventh-day Adventists and keeping you up to date with Adventist news in five minutes or less. And so both of them bring unique and fresh perspectives to the topics we're talking about. And so I'm really excited for you to hear from them. So welcome to Echo. Let's get started. This episode of the Echo Podcast is sponsored by Southern Adventist University. You guys know that song, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls, or yeah. Chasing Waterfalls? I really want to just like change the lyrics of that. You should too. stick to the rivers and streams. <laughs> um, what's what's that Adventist camp song? Um, Down by the river, or, or um... which one? <laughs> yeah, there's so many. They, okay. They, okay. Most of them involve uh, a part of nature. Fair, fair enough. Um, <laughs> except if you're happy and you know it. Um, Clap your hands by the waterfall. <laughs> by by the river, it's not a part of nature. No, these aren't they're not. Natural. No, these are unnatural no. hands. No. Um, my hands are. TMI. Are... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so this one. All three of us, I know for sure, <laughs> have had different experiences here, but with some similarities. And so I'm very excited for us to talk about purpose and what it looks like to kind of identify it, seek it, find it, struggle with it, whatever. Bop it. Um, <laughs> bop it, twist it, turn it. <laughs> um, I am I'm excited to talk about that because I know that um, I know that pretty much everyone struggles with this to some degree. Mm. Um, and even in moments where you think you've found your purpose, um, something comes in and twists it and then you're stuck trying to say like was that my purpose was you know is this still where I'm supposed to be is this what I who I'm supposed to be um, and it seems like all the signs were pointing one way something happens and and everything suddenly is thrown in in um, thrown in doubt and and a wrench is thrown in everything and so I I want to talk about this because I think this is helpful a for even us just to process our own journeys, but B, I'm hoping that those listening can can glean something from our experiences. Well, even if that something is what not to do, <laughs> um, which is something that I found in my life is most of the time it's uh, I learn most of the things that I learned from Kevin is what not to do, and so I'm just uh, really excited to hear his journey. Um, so, this first of all, I want to ask you this. Um, you don't have to distill it down to one sentence, but um, I do want to ask, John, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. If you had to kind of, uh, you know, say your purpose or express what you, what you believe your purpose to be is, how would you express it? It doesn't have to be a single sentence, but um, like no one has like that mission statement just in, I mean, I do, but because I used to put it on resumes as, because pastoral resumes tend to benefit when they have that. Um, but... Yeah, what, how would you express kind of your what you see your purpose as? Um, I think that since like early teenage years, um, the constant in my purpose has been that I want to help people. Mm. Um, that's changed over the years um, in the way that I help people, but that is what fills me, you know, what, mm. what gives me uh, joy to do that's that's more than a paycheck you yeah know? absolutely yeah. um kevin what about you how would you express um you're still trying to think about it aren't you i'm still trying to figure out my purpose uh, yeah well no see well, okay <laughs> hey, perfect. Cool. Yeah. welcome to the show tell us your <laughs> life's purpose yep, you know exactly. it right yeah um you should have known you know it, right? i yeah. emailed you what we were talking about you should have <laughs> oh yeah i figured out my life's purpose via an email Thanks. yeah 13 yeah, hours ago yeah. he yeah. sat yeah. down yeah. and found himself uh, he doesn't yeah. sound annoyed literally at all he sounds like he's really i'm ryan becker and with one email i will tell you what your life's purpose is i will help you discover it um <laughs> no, I, I think mine, um, I'll stall for you, Kevin. Um, I think mine is, uh, really to, and yes, I have figured out like I told you mission statement on resume, um, but to equip and empower people to, uh, embrace who God has called them to be 
or is calling them to be. That's been very much. Um, now there's a general calling, I think, there, and then there's a specific calling. And so, to be, to give an example of those two things, um, the general calling is to help people become people who love others and love God. But I think the the specific purpose is more in line with what I even do as a recruiter right now for college is is I find out and identify what a student or prospective student really wants to do with their life and what you know what they want to study and I help them make that possible. Um, oh, you want to do this? This is who you should talk to. This is the route that you should go. Like I get a lot of joy from being that bridge between people um, in order to help them. Like in college, I was always the person, and even in high school. And part of this was just ironically enough tragedy in my life led me to this because I had to figure things out on my own, but I very much became the person that people came to if they needed to know information, even if, even if it was simple, as simple as who do I talk to for this or how do I get to X place? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, so it's something that's been kind of ingrained in me and I, you know, I do get a lot of value out of it. That's why I do podcasting. That's why I um, love being involved in church ministry as a pastor or just as just someone at church. Um, it's, it becomes the motivation for a lot of what I do, and that throws people off because the, the most natural way this ends up coming up is people will ask me, so where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years, right? And I go, like, what, where, where do you want your career to go? What, what do you want to be doing in five years? And I'm like, I don't, that's not the kind of goal that I have. The goal that I have is to equip and empower people. So, so what? Have you ever heard of Mitch Hedberg? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the comedian either. yeah yeah i've always wanted to reply to somebody with his joke and they're like where do you see yourself in 10 years celebrating the 10-year anniversary of you asking me this question <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> amazing um <laughs> the mitch Hedberg has the like most like slow dry <laughs> delivery of <laughs> jokes i have ever seen um the but no, people will ask me that question, like, where do you want your career to be? What, what are your goals? And I go, man, I don't really care as long as I feel like I'm still accomplishing the thing that I am called to do. Like, that's why I was able to step out of official, like, full-time pastoral ministry mm-hmm. and enter into a recruiting job where I also run a ministry that's a part of that. But And then I'm just a lay pastor. I say just. What I mean by that is I'm not the head honcho over everything. <laughs> that's what I mean by just. Like, I'm a part of an amazing leadership team that shares the, that responsibility. Um so I'm not like downplaying lay pastoring is what I'm saying. Um, but like, that's why I was able to step out and, and be fluid in the, in the job positions and, and the different ministries that I do is because I very much see every, you know, as long as I can see aspects of my calling being fulfilled in what I'm doing, then I don't necessarily care what it is. I will say specifically, I don't feel called to live in some random country and, and as a full-time missionary, like that's a calling Watching that I 10 don't. years, that's where 10 years. Is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I, well, I mean, Wakanda. saying I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I um I don't forever. Uh I don't I don't feel that calling now. Maybe I do in 10 years or 9 years. Uh at least, so that hey, at least you have people asking you where you see yourself in 5 or 10 years. People don't know what I do now. So they like never ask like what are you doing in 5 years because they're like I don't really know what you do uh, what do you do? <laughs> what are you going to be doing in 5 minutes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing in 5 days. Um um, but to get to get back to your your earlier question, you know, I wouldn't say that I know exactly what my purpose is in life, but I do know where I feel alive, and I do know where I feel called. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel I feel alive when when I am in a spot where I'm at the helm of creativity, and I don't know what that always looks like, and a lot of times it looks different. Um, but when I'm in that spot where I get to drive some kind of creative force mm-hmm. um not only just be a part of it but be able to steer it that's where that's where i really feel alive and finding a way to um i don't know i guess kind of to to do that i don't want to i don't want to cheesily say like to do that for god but mm. um but seeing how god has been able to use that and say hey you have this drive for creativity and i can use that and you may not even know how that's going to be used, mm. but promise me when I say, uh, un- understand that you know I'm promising you um, that when I say I can use that, I can. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's huge. Um, and so we're gonna 
we're going to unpack this a little bit more and, and what that journey has looked like for the both of you. But I, you know, I very much agree with you on this. The amount of times that you and I have sat down to, you know, dream up a project or, or think through a process or something, it's, um, the, the, when the wheels are turning, like we get really excited <laughs> and it's, um, it's cool to just watch ideas just kind of flow out of nowhere or us just, um, sit down and, and, and really be able to create and craft something. Um, and for me, um, it is very like, I tend to be someone who I don't necessarily like being on the, on the front lines of an initiative or effort. Like I, I, I would much rather create or craft that experience for someone else. Like I, it's not that I don't like giving, let's just give an example. It's not that I don't like giving Bible studies, but I find more fulfillment in teaching others to give the Bible studies mm. than myself doing them. Um, and I feel like there's a greater benefit in, in the former. And so that's the kind of thing that I see, like I love doing, like I would love, I love, you know, by, you know, by in similar comparison, uh, you know, I would love planning an outreach activity. Um, and yeah, going on the street and doing that, whatever that outreach is. Um, but I, you know, love being the person that is creating the opportunity for someone to step into what God has called them to do. Mm -hmm. That is what I really value. So I, I, I do want to unpack this because I think that, that for the three of us, like we didn't always know that, or we didn't know how to even express this. Right. So, um, you had said the one thing that it was always kind of common through your life was helping people. So I, I, I want to dive into that a little bit. Um, what were some of the ways that you started to identify that? Like, what were some of the things that you started seeing so that you eventually realized that, oh, there's a common thread of, of helping people? Hmm. Um, I think throughout high school, you know, some of the, the jobs that I had um, pointed me in that direction. I, I didn't quite know that it was like, oh, this one gives me greater fulfillment. It was just like, oh, I like doing this thing better than I like doing this thing. And like it wasn't, I don't always have to see immediate results. So it's not like I was sitting there like, oh, this person said that I changed their life and it made me feel really good. It was like I could see the potential of what I was doing, like mm. mission trips, um, summer camp was huge. Um, and specifically the camp that I was working at, um, which is Camp Yava Pines, mm -hmm. uh, we work with a population that is mostly non Adventist. And uh, we get a lot of kids from group homes and just mm -hmm. kids who come from, you know, not great situations. And so getting to minister to those kids yeah, um, was huge for me. And um, I had always thought that summer camp was my goal. Like that, that was my dream job. Like I wanted to run a summer camp. And um, this is where... Like you see yourself in ten years? No, <laughs> but that's where I some saw kids myself. wanted to be an astronaut, <laughs> others a doctor, others a dinosaur. He <laughs> said, "Summer camp director." Yeah, camp director. <laughs> um, but then I got a chance to work year round at a summer camp, and I figured out that they're empty like nine months out of the year, and I yeah. hated that. Like there was nothing there filling my cup, and I was like, "Oh, it's not about summer camp; it's about." people <laughs> mm. i get it now yeah right and so i went back to school um and my plan was just to go back into deaning and um i happened to take a directed study class so uh, i was a class just me and the professor so you really have to read you know <laughs> you actually have to there's no yeah. hey can you help me with a review uh <laughs> can i so, can i see your homework real group quick projects yeah um, so every like, project's a group project in that class <laughs> yeah the you let yourself down <laughs> <laughs> no but really like the chair of the department like agreed to do this for me like she wow. didn't even normally teach this class and she was like yeah so i'm gonna do this for you but you know i'd ask that you you know read and i was like yeah she was like because basically I'm not going to have time to read. You're going to teach me these things. Hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. So if I don't read, like we're going to just be sitting here for an hour, real awkward. <laughs> and, and that's how podcasts are born. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we just put a mic in front of you yeah. both during that hour. And suddenly we have an ep we have yeah. new, a Send new show. One email yeah. and you know, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. And you everything's figure figured purpose. it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And talk for another 30 minutes after that. Um, but you know, at first it, this was a psychology class. It was about um, theories and techniques of counseling. And um, at first she was saying, oh, like, 
let's apply these these things to deaning like take what you learn and apply it to deaning because that's what you want to do and um that's what what we were doing at first and eventually she started just dropping these little ideas like hey you can help a lot of people as a dean but you know where you could really help a lot of people <laughs> as a counselor <laughs> wow. and like it it grew for me mm. for like there's this world of hurting people out there and like i could choose to specialize in in any d little thing like i could go back and work with teens if i want to uh or i could work with a totally different population yeah and there's so many people who need um mm. that kind of help like yeah. if you look at the uh, job statistics for people with a degree in counseling that uh that job market is growing at a rate of 13 yeah. percent which they say if it's growing at like four to five percent it's it's pretty safe to get into wow. so 13 yeah yeah wow um that's crazy no i actually so we worked together one summer at yava pines which mm -hmm. is kind of how we became friends and i do remember one night during i don't think it was teen camp i think it was junior um but i remember this this uh, kid came up to me at one point and I don't remember how we even got on this but it was right before an evening program and he comes up to me and uh, we end up talking about why he's a Christian at all and he's like I, yeah I didn't believe in God this dude's like 14 years old he's like I don't I didn't believe in God um, but the reason I do now is because and just heavy trigger warning moving in moving into the next sentence that I'm about to say um, he said, I've, I've, um, I've tried to kill myself several times each time by hanging. Um, and he said, and every single time I tried the rope broke. Mm -hmm. And he said, the last time I bought a rope that I was for sure, I just gotten it straight from the store. Um, it was, um, you know, brand new and super tough, double, you know, double the thickness of any other that I had tried. And, and he said, when that broke, um, that was the moment that I knew, all right, God's not going to let me do this clearly. Uh, God's not going to allow it, which means he must have something for me. Mm. Um, and for him to feel comfortable enough to share that with me, oh, I know why he approached me. I played Jesus at Camp Yava Pines. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, that's why all the kids, because we did daily skits, and I played Jesus in every single skit. So the idea was you get to know Jesus' his everyday life, and then Friday Here he night. You thought they were approaching uh, him for him. No, that never happens. No, that was the character. Just so we're clear, he cast me as Jesus as the programming director <laughs> because I had a beard. But he looked at me dead in the eye when I asked him, and he said, No, it's because of your acting ability. He had <laughs> never I seen never me seen act. act. <laughs> um, he doesn't regret you, the decision. You act but, like you have a beard. Yes. <laughs> and I like that about you. um the but no no that was like don't think don't think the casting like in the industry is any different it's not <laughs> it's um not. but no that, that like for me i get so much joy out of crafting an experience or or being a part of a place where where kids can share something like that where, mm -hmm. where people can share something like that and have that experience like i love being in a this is so crazy to me but i love I don't know if it's twisted and I should get help for this. Um, but I love being in a place where I won't necessarily benefit from something, but everyone else there will by the work that I'm doing. Um, and yes, I'm twisted. Yeah. You should get help. Okay, That's cool. <laughs> well, everyone should get help. So um, therapists have therapists too. <laughs> everyone should get help. Um, pastors yeah. need a pastor. That's mostly everyone why I said help. it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Kevin, in, in trying to still identify kind of, what that looks like for you and, and, but understanding what makes you feel alive and, and really what makes you passionate. Um, what are some of the ways that you identified that in yourself? Um, I mean, <clears throat> when you find yourself, uh, doing things that, that you lose track of time with and you're mm -hmm. ready to continue, um, that's usually a good sign that you're passionate about it. Yeah. And it's something that you can, you know, go until two in the morning and you're like, oh, I'm still working on this. Oh, my goodness. It's two in the morning. <laughs> but I can't wait to get up tomorrow and start on it again. When you're not looking mm. at, oh, is it five o'clock yet? That's usually when you know that you're passionate about something. Yeah. And then I think trying to figure out, okay, so how do I make that like passion 
work for me like in the real world you know because people i mean people talk about like oh follow your dreams pursue and you're like if you love what you do you'll never work a day in your life you're like cool but you might also be homeless yeah um so like how do you make (laughs) (laughs) how do you make that work in a way that you can still pay your bills and i think you know because we're speaking to a fairly avenous audience it's safe to say that's been one of the biggest challenges for creatives in the church is it's not that they don't want to be creative for the church is that they they don't know how to do that and still pay their bills Mm -hmm. because my cell phone bill my insurance my whatever else isn't paid on ministry it it, it requires real money so how do i make that work um i'll pay you an exposure yeah (laughs) Uh, you can pay your bills with exposure bucks yeah i'll give you 50 percent off to yeah (laughs) Yeah. buy my stuff and still and wear it (laughs) yeah um and and so so that's you know that was a that was a big challenge um, for me figuring some of that stuff out. But um, <clears throat> I think as you as you go down a track, and and I would encourage people to to try new things. If there's something about this that that you find yourself connecting with, give it a go. That may not be the end all, but it may lead you in the course of things toward toward what you find your passion really being. Mm. Um, the the writer of uh, well, writer of a lot of. Uh, um, big movies and shows. Aaron Sorkin, um, which back when Masterclass started, they always advertised his. He was one Sorkin. of the first people yep. on it. He wrote The West Wing. He more recently did Molly's Game. He, um, well, he did uh, The American President. And his example from from that was, as you as you dive into something and you have ideas about something, um, your your end result may not be everything that you worked on, but that doesn't mean that you have to throw it away. When he was working on the American president, he talks about how um, he just imagined what the in and out day daily life is like for the president. And so he really got into way too much detail <laughs> about what he imagined the the daily life to be at the White House. And he walked in with this script that was probably like three times longer than the movie will ever mm-hmm. end up being. Mm-hmm. And he you know, presented it to them and they looked at it and they said, yeah, so out of all this... Um, we really like this little section in here where there's this uh, kind of romance that's happening. And he was kind of, you know, oh, so so not everything else? Just, just yeah, we want to know more about that. And it was such, I, I think it was such kind of an aside, yet that was what, what piqued their interest. And so he, he had to kind of gut the whole thing and almost start nearly from scratch with just that little piece that then developed into the American president. And if you watch the movie, that's what it's about. Um, but all that stuff that he threw out became the entire series that we now know as the West Wing. Mm-hmm. So you may have an idea for something. You may be following something, and you may not know where it's going, um, but it could lead to the the ultimate spot that you want to be at um, in the end. Uh, my some, what, some of the things that I'm working on now are because of... Uh, life directions that I thought were heading in one direction and didn't end up there. Mm -hmm. Um, Prime example is as soon as I graduated from Southern, I I decided not to go back to um, the previous nine to five that I had. I wanted to go a different direction that was more creative um, in, in this storytelling space. And so I, I was applying for stuff and nothing was happening. (laughs) And Mm. I sat down and I put my frustrations into a script and it was a comedy series and it was basically my own personal frustrations being told through a character. Mm. And I worked on that and I never, you know, ne- it, it didn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, fast forward about a year later and I ended up making connections with a development executive from a big studio. And I found myself out in Los Angeles pitching my ideas. And guess which one they liked the most? It was that script that I had spent probably six months in my parents' basement <laughs> trying to come up with that I never thought... <laughs> oh, you're that millennial. Right, yeah, okay. I'm that, I'm <laughs> you're that, that guy. millennial. Um, and we went back and forth, and, and we were talking about, oh, yeah, this... And the studio gave notes, and they were like, yeah, and they wanted to see a second draft, and I came back with a second draft, and then uh, a bunch of things happened in the industry, and the guy that I was talking to was like, I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm going to have a job in two months um, because they're clearing house of a bunch of executives, uh, there was a lot of scandals going on at that time. He wasn't a part of it, but it affected a lot mm-hmm. of big uh, movie studios. Mm-hmm. And so never heard anything. Um, and uh, fast forward like about another year later, um, 
reached out to them and said, hey, you know, we should grab coffee, we should grab uh, lunch or something. And they said, oh, yeah, you know what, I'm actually at this studio now, you should come by. And I said, okay, and I went to the studio, and I get shown to their office, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, so so what are you doing here? And they go, well, I'm actually the head of all of our feature films. And I was like, you're what? <laughs> I was I was not prepared. Um, and you know, I thought, oh, this this is my life story here. I I sat at my in my parents' basement, just frustrated with life, and I put my ideas into this story. And because it was so me, that's what resonated, you know. And then it turns into the show, and then you're talking about like, mm -hmm. how did you come up with this? Well, you know, it was just a rough time. That show never ended up happening. Probably won't ever end up happening. But if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have the relationship that that I have now. And and another kind of cool thing about that, um, back to that that time in the office, we were developing the scratchnews.com, shameless, shameless plug here. <laughs> um, if you're if you're interested in uh, global Adventist news in five minutes or less, go to the scratchnews.com. So we were developing and subscribe. It, and subscribe. <laughs> yes, it's free, totally free. Um, but we were we were developing that at the time, and we're in. I'm in the meeting, and he's like, you know, oh well, what all are you working on? And you know, again, I wasn't ready for like a pitch meeting. Um, and we kind of get to the end of things and I'm just like, I'm scraping for other ideas. What else am I working on? Well, he wouldn't be interested. I, I mean, I'm working on this, uh, niche religious news network. Uh, but then I'm also where, and, and something piqued his interest with that. And he said, Oh, you're, you're doing that. Uh, you know, we've actually been interested in getting into faith based content and which I'm like, really, you guys aren't like a faith based net. Like you guys do really big budget, really, you know, Hollywood type stuff you're inter but if if I hadn't been working on that project that conversation never would have you're developed welcome. into yes so again it all goes back <laughs> um, to, to I Ryan and he can a, help you find your, your yeah, life's I purpose cut, in an email uh, I get royalties <laughs> yeah. for all the projects that, that Kevin gets from this point forward as a result of this but all that to say you don't always know where it's going to go yeah but keep following it if if you mm -hmm. have that calling in your heart you know to a certain extent who where do you think that calling comes from? You know, people are always like, I want to know God's will. Hmm. Well, where do you think a lot of your, hmm. your desires, your, your passion comes from when it's, when it's truly something good. Yeah. Um, and you know, follow that and God yeah. will show you how to use it. Yeah. yeah there, go ahead. Oh, well, um, so something that I'm, that I'm learning, um, that, I think to some people I'll say it and they'll be like, well, duh. And other people, it might be a huge thing. Like it was to me is that like meaning for people is transient, mm. you know, like what you find meaningful now isn't going to be what you find meaningful in 10 years, five mm. years, whatever tomorrow, mm. you know, cause situations are going to change. And, um, there's a really good book, uh, that I've read on that subject. It's called man's search for meaning by Viktor Frankl. I thought you were going to just say uh, the Bible. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so actually in that class that I was talking about earlier in this, uh, I was reading uh, the introduction to a certain modality of therapy. And uh, there's this quote that said like, the last human right that can be taken from a man is his ability to choose how to feel in any situation. And my initial like reaction was like, how entitled, like this dude has probably never, ever faced anything. Like he's probably been seriously bummed out and stubbed his toe. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> come to find out he came up with that theory and that sentence, um, in a concentration camp. I knew I somehow I knew that's where we were going. Yeah. Where and, he stubbed his toe. <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> so tell in, me more, John. In, <laughs> in Auschwitz, actually. Wow. Is where he came up with this theory. And um, it wow. gave it just a lot more. <laughs> I cannot get over that. <laughs> it just gave that a lot more meaning. Yeah, absolutely. Because of his experience and where he I just, <laughs> I just can't even look at Kevin I right just, now. Have you seen that gif of Homer Simpson retreating into a bush? <laughs> that's, that's how I see Kevin right now. I'm just like watching um, the face of uncomfortability. On um, and no, the... Um, we're not making light of concentration no, gifts, I promise. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Um, the... 
the reality um, for me is that I learned to ask um, a few questions when it came to trying to identify if something I'm doing is God's will or identifying if my purpose or passions and desires are in line with God's will. So the first, uh, the first question I always ask is, is this thing, um, does it fit with my talents and actually abilities? Like, does it fit, you know, I could be passionate about horseback riding and, you know, I don't never ridden a horse in my life um, or skydiving, same deal, right? Um, yeah. The second thing that I always ask is, is this in line with God's character, with like who God is? And that tends to be actually the question that usually, hmm. usually confirms or confirms it one way or the other, right? Um, and the way that I ask this in line with what you said is meaning is transient. Um, I ask, is, is this, are these desires and passions consistent with who I know God to be now? Because our understanding of God grows over time, and God is not this static entity. Um, I mean, He is forever and, and eternal. But I, what I mean by that is, our you know, our understanding of that, you know, it does grow over time. It is dynamic, and um, and so is this true? Uh, is this in line with what I know to be true of God now? Um, yeah, that usually does it um, for me. Uh, that's usually like that's all I need. That that's it. In fact, you could probably start there and be fine. Um, and the other thing is, um, the, the last question I need is, what do I actually need to make th that happen? Um, and that's where the faith element comes in for me is, uh, is if I do have the things in front of me, great. But if I don't, and I do believe this is in God's will and within my abilities and talents and whatever, maybe it's out of reach of my abilities and talents right now, but it, you know, it can be, then there's the act of faith of trusting that God will eventually open that door and make that way possible. Um, that has been like that has completely shifted everything for how I take on new projects, for how I um, decide jobs, for how I make major life decisions, relationship decisions, like all of like those two questions have been so foundational for me um, and have made things a lot smoother. Um, but I'm always careful to not, to not scapegoat God and say, just because I believed this was in his will does not, like what I did is in his will, does not mean that it's his fault if it went wrong. Mm -hmm. um, that's the caveat there. Just because God, you know, may desire you to do something, does not mean you get the you get the uh, option to blame him when everything goes, you know, or if everything goes south uh, and not the way that you planned. Like for you, you know, you've got this, or um, we can even talk about Aaron Sorkin with the American president. Like all that stuff that he wrote, he has to gut, and then that ends up becoming something else. Mm -hmm. um, just because it wasn't right now doesn't mean it's not. It couldn't be right later. Mm -hmm. um, even. Um, the girl that I'm dating now, the first time that we started talking wasn't the right time. And then we reconnected a year later, picked up right where we left off. Because and, at that point he was a famous podcast. Uh, because yeah, so, at that yeah. point, yeah, I built my platform and you know, it's great. Uh, now, now all the girls want you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. um, can help them find their purpose. In a any, <laughs> um, <laughs> I hate you both. <laughs> I'm never opening up to either of you ever again about anything in my life. Um, so, listener, I'm looking for new friends. Uh, if you'd like to put in an application. <laughs> to apply, um, go to. <laughs> leave a comment on the YouTube video uh, or uh, leave a review and just say, Ryan, I'd your like to be your new friend. Your shirt said to be disruptive. Um, we're disrupting. That's exactly that's what you're exactly doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Um, also shameless plug. <laughs> also shameless plug for disruptive Adventism, a friend uh, podcast that is uh, a friend of ours and a friend of this show. So, um, hey, any final thoughts, anything that any way that you would encourage someone who's trying to kind of uh, chase their purpose and, and find out what that is? Uh, anything that you would leave them with? Say yes a lot. <laughs> like, hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, one of my, I mean, within reason, one <laughs> of my, one of my mottos is I'll say yes to anything once within reason. Right. Um, you know, not if it's like, but yeah, I'll try most things once. And if it doesn't work, cool. Then I know that's not the thing I should do. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't like chocolate or peanut butter. Uh, I tried it <laughs> once and I didn't like them. I tried them once a year. Just, I know I'm the problem there. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm what's wrong in that yeah. scenario. Not the chocolate or peanut butter. All right. Step one is you admitted the problem to yourself. Unless it's a three musketeers bar, in which case the problem <laughs> is three musketeers. Um, Kevin, what about you? Um, I, I think the heart reveals itself in whatever you do. So, you know, don't like, don't force yourself into a ministry that you hate. Hmm. I mean, it's going to come through. Yeah. And, and if that's someone else's calling, let it be their calling. Mm -hmm. Your calling may be different and you may not know exactly what it is, but it, it'll, it'll show itself mm -hmm. over time. And, and God, I don't think that God wants us to, 
I, I think he I think he wants us to be um, happy in our calling. And so I don't I don't see him like forcing us to take on something that we hate every part of it. But we're you know, but I have to do this. I, I think that I think that he can find a way to use the things that you're passionate about mm-hmm. to be your calling, to be your yeah. ministry. Um, and and just discovering that is yeah. going to be a process. There's people that I talk to that, um, you know, they, they want to do something. And I'm like, well, just just go for it. You know, dive, dive into it. Oh well, you know, I'm 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 almost uh, I'm almost done with this, and then you know I'm about to get married, so I really need this job for. Okay, all right. Well, how about how about after you get married? Oh well, well then you know we're gonna be looking at a kid on the way soon, so we gotta save up, so I can't quit my job for that. Well, then I'm almost at a promotion. Well, well then we gotta put that kid through college with it. Well, then all of a sudden you know years and years go by, mm-hmm. and you never dove into your passion. And what what encouraged me was um, someone who was actually my volunteer youth pastor. And I saw him go through his midlife crisis. And at that point, he was he was like, you know, I've been in this job and this isn't my calling. And I love like youth ministry and I love working with kids and I love music. And I don't, I, I know I'm not in the right spot, mm. but I've known I'm not in the right spot for a long time and I ignored it. And mm. now my taking that, that switch over to something else isn't just risking me it's risking a whole family yeah because they're relying on me and i watched him go through that and it was tough and he and he came out in the end and he's and he's so much better off now than he was when he was going through that once he made that jump Mm -hmm. but it encouraged me to to take that risk now instead of um later on when it's it's not i'm not just yeah. risking myself i'm risking others yeah absolutely well thank you both um i would i would end in qualifying your statement too there are some people that end up do getting called into <laughs> um some pretty terrible situations uh daniel and jeremiah are two that i think of in the bible <laughs> uh, moses um who who wants to be called to lead six hundred thousand grumpy people across the wilderness for 40 years um but for every and this is this is to your point of um, embrace your calling, not someone else's. For every Moses, there are there are six hundred thousand Israelites that are called to just be Israelites, mm-hmm. right? And that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's not lower than Moses. Um, so embrace your calling very much. Um, so two things as we close out here. Number one, uh, we do apologize uh, for anything that may have been offensive on this episode, um, and I just want to make that clear out the gate. Um, sometimes things happen in just normal conversation, um, and that's kind of what happens on podcasts is it's an organic conversation and sometimes those things happen. Uh, so we do apologize to anyone that we have offended. Uh, the second thing that I want to say is, um, if we have, offended. <laughs> yeah, to those that we have offended, we apologize. Um, but number two, the, um, number two, we do hope you found something here with chasing your purpose. Even if it's learning what not to do, um, we hope that you have found something that you can resonate with and something that you can utilize in your personal life as well. So thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to Echo and for being on this journey with us. If you're watching on YouTube, we hope that you'll leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button. If you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, or whatever podcasting app that you like the most, we hope that you'll hit that subscribe button, that you'll leave a review, and that you'll engage with us. And also for more content from Project Refresh that's like Echo and some of the other shows that we host, then head on over to theprojectrefresh.org. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to us, and we'll see you next week. This episode of the Echo Podcast is sponsored by Southern Adventist University.